Hi, my name is Talis. I work in Global Technology Solutions for Cushman and Wakefield. And in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of working with a task list in SharePoint. In a task list, each task is an individual item that you can assign to a single person, but you can also make these tasks part of a larger project. You can update the progress of each task, you can enter a percentage complete, and you can make a task dependent on the completion of other tasks. You can also customize different views, such as a timeline view or a Gantt chart. I'll show you how to do all of these things. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to integrate the SharePoint task list with Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Project. Let's get started. Go to your SharePoint site. Here's a brand new out of the box team site that I requested for this training. To learn how to request your own site, there's a video in the SharePoint training library that you can watch to learn how. Your site may or may not look exactly like this. Either way, that's not a problem because the process will be the same. Click on the gear icon and choose site contents. If you don't have a gear icon or in the gear icon menu, you don't have a site contents option, then you don't have the level of permission you need to make changes to a site. You have to have ownership or admin rights to do this. Now I'm viewing all site content and when I scroll down I can see that I already have a task list on my site. This zero in the items column means it's empty. There's nothing in this list. So I can click on it and use this task list but there's actually a task app I want to use. Let me show you how to add the task app. From site contents click on new and you can see a list option, but for a task list, we want to choose app. Here's the tasks app. Click on it, name it. I'll name this one training video project and then click create. SharePoint automatically throws me back into my site contents page. And here I can see this new task list that I just created. I'll click on it. And now I'm in my newly created task list. This task list app puts a timeline at the top of the list. Later I'll show you how to hide the timeline if you want. First let's enter a summary task. There's a couple of ways to do that. One way is just click on edit this list. That turns the list into a grid that I can edit directly. Enter the task name and I can tab to the next field and enter a due date. I'll tab to the next column and I'm going to assign this task to me. Then when I click stop editing, you can see that SharePoint threw this task up on the timeline for you. Now SharePoint does that for the first task only. For tasks after that, you have to put them on the timeline yourself and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So this is my summary task. And now I want to create some subtasks for this summary task. These are the tasks that will be part of this project. When I click on the ellipsis of this task, I can see when the task is due. There's a hyperlink for this specific task and some menu options. I'm clicking on create a subtask. I'll name this subtask identify training objectives. I'll choose a due date and tab over and assign it to myself. I'm going to stop editing. Now you don't have to stop editing each time but I'm doing it so I can demonstrate some features more easily. Now I want this task to show up on the timeline so click on the ellipsis and choose add to timeline. Okay another way to add an item to the list is to choose new task. I'll name this task and here I have an additional option that does not appear in the task list view. I can enter a start date. I'll enter a due date and assign it to me and then click save.
Okay, a couple of things here. I have this write script item, but I want it to be a subtask of the produce training video. To do that, just indent it. Put a check mark in front of it, go to the tasks tab, and indent. SharePoint switches into edit mode and indents that task. You know, while I'm here, I can add it to the timeline. Then I'll click stop editing. And since I have a start date populated for this task, I can see that it has shown up on my timeline with a blue bar indicating the period of time for this task. Now I can also go back and enter start dates for the other tasks and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. First though, let's add a third subtask. Again, I can click the ellipsis on the summary task and choose create subtask, but I'm going to click on new task and name it. I'll give it a start date and an end date and assign it to me. And maybe you noticed this show more button and when I click it I can associate more data with this particular task. I can enter a percent complete, I can enter a description, I can choose a predecessor task, a priority level, and a task status. This task is dependent on a previous task being complete. I can't record the voiceover until I first write the script. So I'm going to make write script a predecessor task. I'll click save and I want to indent the record voiceover item because it is a subtask of the summary task. And when I click on the tasks tab, most of the options are grayed out. Once I choose a particular task, I can see the options available for that task. I'll indent this task to make it a subtask of this project. I also want this task to show up on my timeline. And I'll click on Stop Editing. So I've already shown you a few ways to add tasks, how to add those tasks to a timeline, and a few ways to create subtasks. Now let's talk about views. These list items have information associated with them that I don't see right now. For instance, I don't see the start date in this list. I want to modify this view. To the left of the search field, I can click these options for different views. Here's all tasks, which is the current view. If I click calendar, I can see these items in a calendar view. I'll go back to the list. I want to see the start date of these items in the All Tasks view. So while I'm in the All Tasks view, I'll click on the ellipsis to the right of the views and choose Modify this view. And here I can see checkboxes of the data that I want to show on the task view. I want to add a start date column right here. You know what, I want to add a percent complete column too. So I check those items and then go to the very bottom of the screen and click on OK. And now I see the percent complete column and the start date column on my all tasks view. And that's how you add items to a view. Now when I check an item is complete, the percent complete amount changes from 0 to 100%. I can click on the completed view and it will show me only those task items that are complete. I'll go back to the all tasks view. I'll uncheck that. You know what? This is a little confusing to me. I want the start date to appear before the due date. So I'm going to go back and modify the view and the start date is in the sixth position from the left. I'm going to make it number three go to the very bottom and click on OK and now you can see that my start date column has moved to the third position. Now some people have asked if it's possible to hide the timeline view. Let me show you how. I'll modify the view and I'm scrolling down to the style menu. Click on the plus sign to expand the menu and here I can click this checkbox to turn off the timeline view. 
I also have the choice of showing completed items as struck through. I'm just going to leave this as is, but if you make any changes on this page, be sure to go to the bottom and click OK to complete the changes. OK, I'm missing some start dates and I want to populate them. I can use the ellipsis to open the item. Then at the ribbon on top, choose Edit Item. And here I can populate my start date for this project, this summary task, and click Save. And you can see at the top in the timeline view, it filled in that bar for the summary task. Now this identify training objectives needs a start date. I can use the ellipsis to open it. I can actually just click directly on that item to open it. And I can also edit this directly. I'll click on edit this list. And when I click on Stop Editing, this item is now displaying as a bar populating the date range from start to end. So in the timeline view, if I have a start and end date, it will fill the bar with a color. I can change that color. Just click on it, and in the Timeline tab, choose a different color. I'll make this project dark green. And you can see I can't really see the text now, so I'm going to change the text to white. I'll make this one light gray, and this one dark gray. I'll change the text to white so I can read it. Now to help organize this timeline visually, I can drag these tracks around if I want. And when I click on the item, I can change the way it's displayed. I can make it a call out, and I can move that around if I want. I'll change it back to display as bar. So SharePoint has some other built-in views. Here's the Gantt chart view. And now I have a Gantt chart view below the timeline. The arrow here is referencing the predecessor task or that prerequisite task that I set up. I have to write a script before I can record the voiceover. I can click on an item and move it up and down if I want to organize these tasks in a visually different way. Okay, back to the all tasks view. I covered the basics of building a task list. Let me show you a few other things that I think will be helpful for you. I can configure SharePoint to send an email to a person when he or she is assigned to a task. That option is in the list advanced settings. So click on the list tab, choose list settings, advanced settings, and here under email notifications, choose yes. Be sure to click OK. I have this recent option in the navigation. I can use that to go back to my list and click edit. I'm going to add a new subtask. Populate a start date and end date. And assign it to me. And click on Stop Editing. I'm going to add it to my timeline. I'll make it light green. And I just received an email. Here it is. So this is a great way to alert your teammates that you assigned a task to them. I can also sync this list to my task list in Microsoft Outlook. In the List tab, click on Connect to Outlook. Now the first time this happens, you may see a dialog box that asks if it's okay for an outside application, in this case a browser, to be opening an application on your computer. Just click Launch Application, click Yes, and right away this list is now on my Outlook in the Tasks section. In Outlook, I'm marking the Identified Training Objectives task as complete. And when I refresh SharePoint, my list in SharePoint reflects that completed task. And it works both ways. In SharePoint, 
I'll complete the Write Script task. And when I refresh Outlook, that item is complete. Okay, the same process for exporting this list into Microsoft Project. Click on the List tab, choose Open with Project, launch it, And now my task list is displaying in Microsoft Project. To sync this list, you have to click Save in Microsoft Project. I'll click Save. And I can make changes in Project, but for those changes to sync into SharePoint, I have to click on Save. When you create this Microsoft Project from your task list, SharePoint actually creates a dot mpp file in your site assets library you can access that file by going to site contents site assets and here it is I can click it and it takes me right back to project So next time you need to open the tasks in Project or make quick changes, you can just go to the Site Assets in SharePoint and open that MPP file. It will automatically sync the changes from your SharePoint task list. So now you have enough basic knowledge to create your own projects and tasks in SharePoint.